going on YouTube? Evan here with Cloud9 Aquariums. We're back on the discus thing, okay? So today, we're going to be talking about filtration and water quality. Probably some of the biggest things when it comes to discus. Um, unfortunately, you're probably not going to see much of mine today because as you can see, all four of them are hiding out right here. Um, me being an absolute complete moron, um, happened to bump my tank as I was coming out. And um, not only am I wearing black, which is probably the worst thing to be wearing around discus when they're young because they always think I'm a predator. Um, but bumping them really freaked them out and now they're probably just going to hide for the rest of eternity. So, and of course they already ate so I can't even, I can't even coax them out with that. Um, so unfortunately you're probably not going to see much of them, but I assure you they don't actually hate me and they're doing great. Um, <laughs> with that being said, um, discus. As we all know, well, as some of us know, discus require very, very clean water. Why is this really? Okay, um, now, I don't want to get too much onto their natural habitat type of a thing because as I've already kind of stressed out in the future, or in the past I guess I should say, um, you know, a lot of the fish we're getting nowadays are not coming from the wild, and if they are, you probably don't actually want them. Especially discus, you really don't want wild caught discus. Um, but we also have to remember that they do have, um, you know, the body makeup that, you know, obviously was created for that exact existence. So we do have to mimic it just a little bit. Um, as you may or may not know, they do come from the Amazon. Um, they come from an area where the water is extremely clean, extremely clear, um, and you know it's constantly flowing new water into that area so they're just programmed for crystal clear perfect serene water um, which I mean can be a good thing but it also kinda sucks for some of us who um, you know you gotta remember these are closed these are closed systems so sure our water is awesome when we put it in but as the week progresses as time progresses our water quality is technically constantly diminishing so we have to remember that um, when it comes to me specifically, um, as you know, I've been raising um, some of my discus. Well, at least the blue guys here have been raising since, you know, they were just little guys. Um, maybe quarter, not even quarter size. So they've definitely, you know, been doing some growing since then. Um, they're about, well, you can't see them, but they're about two and a half inches. They're actually hiding out right there. And one dude's trying to pop his face out right now. And um, my, my other ones, which are uh, hiding out in the back there, they're about three and a half, almost four inches. Now. Oh, they're probably about... Yeah, probably getting up to four inches now. Um, so, you know, they're all doing great. Um, but how do we get them up to that phase? Um, this is very, very, um, I, I wouldn't want to say specialized, but when we're talking about the more juvenile discus especially, this is when it's crucial to have clean water. And after doing you know, a lot of research and talking around a lot, the, the main reason why we actually care the most about water quality when they're juveniles is actually because their bodies are actually producing... A hormone that they're releasing into the water um, it's almost like a uh, population control type of a thing so what it what it basically does is this hormone um, it's released you know when it when it continues to pile up and pile up in the water um, that concentration of it in the water will actually slow down their growth um, so it's like an anti-growth hormone I guess you could you could uh, if that helps you out at all so basically what it's doing um, it was I mean if you're thinking in the wild you know um, when you have way too many fish in one area you know, and um, there's really not enough room for all of them to be growing, this will actually keep them from growing up to full size so that they can all survive. It's actually an amazing um, adaptation, I guess you could say. Um, but in something like this, you know, obviously if you're like me, you want the giant, you know, happy discus that are swimming around and they're all fat and bubbly and they're just, you know, size of a freaking plate. Um, you know, that's what we all want. So in order to get them to that, you have to make sure that you get, you're getting rid of that hormone out of the water. So that's one big reason why we do a lot of water changes. A lot of people, you know, are asking, well, why can't I just do a week, weekly change? That's one of the biggest reasons. The second reason um, why you want to continue to at least do, you know, pretty frequent water changes is because they have a very limited immune system. Um, a lot of our other fish would not even remotely get sick half the time. And when they do, it's, you know, a very obvious bug that came into the tank. We all know exactly what it is. We treat it and boom, you know, they're over it. And, you know, their bodies learn from it, I guess you could say. You know, they build their immune systems. Whereas discus, especially when they're growing up, have, I mean, literally no immune system. It's the, it's the weakest thing I've ever experienced. And that's what can be very, very challenging. That's one of the reasons why discus are extremely expensive. Um, is because just the mortality rate when you're trying to raise discus can be very high because their immune systems are always lacking and it can be 
kind of a challenge because you don't always necessarily know what's wrong with them when they're sick. So it can't always be the easiest thing to treat. As you know, I've actually lost countless, um, well, I wouldn't say countless, but I've lost multiple discus. And it's been, um, you know, it's definitely been a learning experience for me because coming back from my, all my other tanks, you know, I, I can't get them to stop breeding. I can't get the, this to stop growing and that to stop growing. But for some reason, you know, discus are, they're giving me a run for their money. But as always, you know, I mean, this is how we all learn. And we're learning together and better me than you, right? So learn from my mistakes, folks. Um... And sometimes it's not even mistakes. Sometimes you're you're doing everything right, and um, you know, I mean, other people don't even know sometimes. So it can just be one of those things where you're like, oh wow, I didn't know that could happen. So now you know, and I guess hopefully we can try to avoid that from ever happening again. Um, so my de general recommendation when it comes to water quality is large, large water changes. Um, most people will do at least 75% water changes. You know, we're not screwing around here, folks. Um, we keep bare bottom tanks because we want to keep that water clean. So when we do, when we do do, you know, our water um, changes, we're definitely cleaning. We're siphoning the whole bottom, and we're taking it down. I mean, I, if you actually go online and you look up some discus breeders that come, you know, the very large breeders that are out in Asia, um, where they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tanks. You know, I mean, you'll see them. They'll drain the tank all the way to the point where the discus are laying flat on their sides. You know, so like a 99% water change type of a thing. I don't go that far. It's kind of ridiculous to me. Um, but definitely, you know, 70, 75, 80% water change all day. Don't even question it. Um, now, when I do do these also, um, I try, you know, a lot of people will do them either. The general rule of thumb, I guess you could say, is every day or every other day. Um, and I also agree with that. I find um, that they are always a lot happier, a lot healthier. They're not getting sick. They're eating a lot better if you at least do it minimum every other day. Um, that might seem like a lot to you, but if you're raising them in a smaller tank, it's not a big deal. If you're trying to raise discus in like a hundred and something gallon tank, I mean, that's going to be a real pain. So unless you have a ton of time, I really, really, really wouldn't recommend it. Um, 30 gallons is great because it's big enough that they have space to swim, space to grow. Um, it doesn't take forever to change the water. Um, and again, if I mean, I can't stress this enough. If you're trying, I mean, any fish, but really, if you have discus, please get a water changer. I mean, seriously, don't try to do bucket brigade on a tank like this every single day. That's just absolutely, you're killing yourself. It's You're not going to like the fish anymore because you're like, wow, this is way too much work, you know. Whereas I can do a water change on this in like six minutes flat. I mean, and that's like, you stick it in, you know, you, you, you I'll go around and siphon it down for like, what, all of 30 seconds, you know, maybe maybe a minute to actually get all the crud off the bottom, which, because, you know, I mean, if you're doing it frequently, there's not going to be that much anyways. Just a little bit of poo, you call it a day, and then, you you know, you can walk away from it for the three minutes that it's draining, and then you just, you know, get your water and you go. So it doesn't have to be a big process, you know, just something, just do it quick um, and call it a day. When it comes to filters, okay, so, you, you know, your water changes are basically your primary, that's how you're going to keep your water clear. But obviously, you're still going to have to have some moving water in there. You're going to want to have some filters in there. Um, it is necessary. Don't try to say it's not. Um, is biological filtration necessary? This is a big, big, broad topic that I could get onto for a while. Um, because you're doing so many water changes, you can argue with me, and I would be completely honest in saying that I, I could actually agree with you, that biological filtration is not actually all that important when it comes to discus tanks because when you're doing your fil you know you're changing your water so much you're really not light letting any of those nitrates or nitrites um, build up in the system so you know in terms of big that being broken down in your ammonia and you know your nitrate nitrogen cycle um, it's not really going to happen all that much I mean sure you don't want your tank to be going through a cycle every day um, but again it's not going to ever build up so it's like you're never going to get through that. But you have to remember, if you don't have any bacteria built up into it, and say, for instance, you let your tank go for a week, boom, now you're going to go through a nitrogen cycle, folks, and it may be ugly. So you have to remember that if you're not really actually running a bacteria colony in there, you may experience a nitrogen cycle, which may in turn make your fish sick. So keep that in mind. Um, this is why what I like to do um, is I have three filters, okay, on a 30-gallon tank. Yeah, this is absolutely unnecessary. I know, you know. But hey, it works for me, so why not? Okay, this is how we're doing it. I've got two hang-on bag filters. Why do I have two hang-on bag filters? Okay, the reason being, because one of them is definitely sufficient. Um, the reason being, because I like to change my filters separately. I don't like to do them both at the same time. So 
this allows me to change one one week and one the next week. So I can constantly rotate. They're, you know, I'm doing it probably every week or every, um, well, let's, so if I'm changing one a week, that means that every single filter is running for two weeks. Um, depending on how cruddy it can get. Some of them, I mean, it just, I mean, when it comes to filters and changing them out, especially hang on back so you can see it, I'm looking at it and looking when it's, you know, you can see the water is no longer going through the sponge. It's shot, okay? That's when it's done. So maybe it lasts a month, maybe it lasts two weeks. That's up to you. Um, I usually like to play it safe as as opposed to sorry. Um, I do like to use the hang-on backs um, that have a little bit of um, biological in it. One of mine doesn't, and the other one does. So um, if you don't know about those, look them up. Go to your fish store. Um, they're they're making hang-on backs that now have like ceramic disc and stuff in which in them, and um, they also have like a bigger sponge in the front of your actual like um, you know your carbon and all that crap. But again, I'm not using any carbon in my filters, okay? No activated carbon is necessary in a discus tank, and a lot of people um, tend to say that it's n it, not only is it not necessary, but they don't really like it. So I would highly recommend um, from, this is all word of mouth from everyone I know, let's not use activated carbon in a discus tank. So, there you go. Um, no activated carbon, I'm just using, you know, normal polyfloss. Doesn't have to be deep be a big deal we're just trying to get out any type of big debris just to keep the tank water clear and moving so to hang on backs and then another filter that's really my biological is the giant sponge filter okay you can't hurt anything it's a great thing to have in there um, especially because your hang on backs don't quite offer enough biological filtration for me personally so I do like to have a sponge filter in a tank such as this because it just keeps everything very 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 stable which is a great thing because again they have very weak immune systems, and they're just not as hardy as you'd like them to be, so having a very stable system keeps the fish very happy and healthy. So that's what we like. Um, so I hope that kind of answers some questions about what I'm doing for my water quality um, in terms of a discus tank. Um, this can be applied to any tank, obviously, but um, it's you know the, the water changes and things like that, and having so much over-filtration and such, that's not necessary for other tanks. Usually, you know, I don't recommend doing that much just because sometimes, I mean, I wouldn't say it doesn't, it never throws your tank out of balance, but it's just not, it's not necessary. Why would you do extra work? You know, if your fish are cool for a week, don't worry about it. Because, again, if you have a system that is very, very balanced and everything's just, you know, eco-friendly, having a good time, especially when you got your planted tanks and such, I mean, come on, dude, we're all having a good time. So, um, don't freak out and say, oh, my God, i got to start changing every other tank for you know, every other day or every single day. It's, no, just your discus. Do it, I'm telling you. That's what you want to do. Um, especially when they're juveniles, I would do more water changes, obviously, because of that growth hormone thing. When they get a little bit bigger, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's quite so necessary, especially if you're having a ginormous tank um, and you have a lot more water than you do have fish. Um, that's not quite so necessary. But, again, you don't want to let it get out of hand um, because it just, it'll, it'll bite you in the butt, folks. It's going to bite you. So... That's my little tidbit for today. Um, next time, I think we're talking about some feeding, and um, that can be a big thing with this kit. So um, definitely, definitely, definitely check that out when I bring it out. Um, and until then, let's keep this new year rolling. So with that being said, I hope this brings you and your discus tanks a little bit closer to Cloud9.